Hello comrades, it's Comrade Rees here, and today I'm going to explain to you all why I'm pro-Brexit. Now, I'm going to be mentioning the word imperialism quite a lot in this video, so for anybody who doesn't know what imperialism is, I will briefly discuss the Marxist-Leninist understanding of imperialism. Imperialism is often simplified to mean simple military conquest, the building of an empire. But in the Marxist-Leninist understanding of the word, it means much more than that. Imperialism means taking over another country's natural resources, utilising their cheap labour, and taking over their markets. Notice that all of these actions are economic and political, not military. Imperialism requires military intervention and violence only when it cannot achieve these things in any other way. Military conquest isn't really the point, it's only a means to an end. The goal is economic exploitation. Military intervention merely facilitates this exploitation. The Western imperialist countries own most of the world's wealth. They exploit cheap third world labour, dig minerals and oil from poor countries at very low prices and dominate the global markets. This is imperialism. Even though imperialism in itself is an economic activity, some imperialist countries do engage in constant imperialist wars to further their economic interests, most notably the United States and Britain. Imperialism is the modern stage of capitalism, global capitalism. I would like to start off this video by reading out a quote by comrade Vladimir Lenin on the subject of the United States of Europe. From the standpoint of the economic conditions of imperialism, i.e. the export of capital and the division of the world by the advanced and civilized colonial powers, a United States of Europe under capitalism is either impossible or reactionary. Of course, temporary agreements are possible between capitalists and between states. In this sense, a United States of Europe is possible as an agreement between the European capitalists. But to what end? Only for the purpose of jointly suppressing socialism in Europe. On the present economic basis, i.e. under capitalism, a United States of Europe would signify an organisation of reaction. And I think we've had plenty of years of experience of this United States of Europe, the European Union, and we know that it is an organisation of reaction. Although the specifics of the situation have changed considerably since Lenin wrote this quote that I have just read out over a hundred years ago, the essence is still the same. A union of imperial states can only be a reactionary entity. But not only can it be reactionary, but it also can't last. The contradictions within capitalism will cause it to collapse anyway. The European Union is an imperialist free trade organisation that serves the interests of the biggest multinational corporations, banks, capitalists and capitalist countries in Europe. The EU serves the interests of the most wealthy, and this is why us communists oppose it. However, for those of us who actually enjoy interacting with people from other countries, and who enjoy enriching themselves and getting to know other cultures, for people who identify with the working classes of other countries, it seems a bit counterintuitive to stand against the EU, which seems to be a vehicle for facilitating communication across other boundaries and bringing workers of different nationalities closer together. Nevertheless, even though the European Union undoubtedly has its beneficial aspects, it remains the case that its essence is as an imperialist outfit, designed to enable the bourgeoisie of the various imperialist countries to be strong enough financially and militarily to safeguard their imperialist interests and their imperialist status against, on one hand, their imperialist rivals, against oppressed countries, and thirdly, against the working classes of their own countries. That is why they have to be strong. That is why they end up worrying whether they can afford the military force. So, as the title of this video shows, I am pro-Brexit. However, in opposing the European Union, I find myself in some extremely nauseating company from the far right, otherwise known as the Little Englanders, harking back to the UK's imperial glory days when Britannia ruled the waves all on its little own, and imagining that somehow it is possible to bring back that glory. There is also the type of people who don't want to pay the price of membership, which as far as they are concerned, 
wipes out the significant advantage of British imperialism. All they can see is the costs to maintain the common agricultural policies, how much it costs to help those who are financially bankrupted by the capitalist system, how much it costs to provide the working class with minimally acceptable working and living conditions. And a typical expression of this stingy mindedness is an entrepreneur, a capitalist named Luke Johnson, and he wrote in the Times, Europe has 7% of the world's population, 25% of the world's GDP, but 50% of the world's welfare spending. This is unsustainable. Well, comrades, in case he hadn't noticed, the vast majority of those who benefit from welfare spending don't enjoy any great luxuries in their lives. So if you remove those benefits, from their point of view, it is quite clearly unsustainable. It's very true that capitalists frequently need to reduce workers' living conditions below what is sustainable. Capitalism forces workers into poverty to maintain its profit, and that is exactly why capitalism must be overthrown. Incidentally, although for the various reasons, the European Union did introduce certain workers' rights that in many of its member states had not previously existed. However, this can hardly justify the line taken by the TUC General Secretary Frances O'Grady. She wrote in the Trotskyist newspaper The Morning Star during the Brexit referendum, It's the EU that guarantees workers their rights to paid holidays, parental leave, equal treatment for part-timers, and much, much more. A succession of EU directives has driven progress on workers' rights and equality in Britain often further and faster than any British government of any stripe was prepared to go. So now the question is, if we left the EU, would you trust the current Conservative government to keep them? If the Brexit camp gets its way, which it did back in 2016, the British government would get to pick and choose which rights to water down or scrap altogether. Without an EU legal safety net, it wouldn't be long before bad employers started cutting back on paid holidays, pushing workers to work longer hours with fewer breaks, and stopping pregnant workers getting time off for medical appointments. Unions would not have the chance to extend workers' rights through the European Court of Justice, as we have done on equal pay and working time, and our collective agreements that build on these legal minimums would be under threat. That is why the TUC is warning workers about the risks of Brexit. Workers have a lot to lose. Does Francis O'Grady seriously think that the imperialist bourgeoisie of other European countries are somehow kinder to the working class than the imperialist bourgeoisie here in Britain? She could perhaps take a little trip to Greece, where pensions have been slashed to nothing, welfare benefits have disappeared, the hospitals don't have any medicine... Greece is, by the way, still a member of the European Union. Even when Britain does officially leave the European Union, which I believe is in 2019, EU human rights safeguards will be removed in Britain. Whether in Britain or in other EU countries, workers will only be able to safeguard their rights in the traditional way, which is by fighting for them and winning. But they have no hope of winning if they get drawn into the very narrow-minded, anti-immigrant hysteria that can be found throughout the far right. Also, Francis O'Grady shouldn't really be pinning her hopes on a brutal imperialist outfit to safeguard workers' rights. She should be getting the various unions that are under her influence to grow a pair of balls and be ready to fight for the interests of the working class.